In this video, we will focus on multiplying decimals by powers of 10 or exponents. Uh, specifically, we are going to be changing or converting these numbers between the exponent form, also called the scientific notation, the expanded form, and the standard form. I hope you remember decimals. Let's scroll up just a tad to get a little bit of memory of these decimals. Um, if you remember, when we say 3 times 10 to the third power, we are basically saying 3 times 10 times 10 times 10, which equals, we write our 3 and we write 1, 2, 3 zeros. 1, 2, 3 zeros. So 3 times 10 to the third power equals 3,000 because it's 3 times 10 times 10 times 10 and there are 3 zeros. We can also make sure we highlight or look at the exponent and that will tell us how many zeros we need. It's a little bit different when we're talking about decimals because there's a decimal involved. So instead of multiplying it quite, we are going to be multiplying it by tens, but it's not going to quite be as easy with adding three zeros. Instead, we're going to move our decimal point. So let's take a look at this very first one. We have two and seven tenths times 10 to the third power. So for expanded form, it's really easy and simple and just like the way we used to do it. We're going to say two and seven tenths times 10 times 10 times 10. Remember, 10 to the third power just means we're multiplying it by 10 three times. So we've got our 2 and 7 tenths times 10 times 10 times 10. We've got three tens there. Now it's time to start thinking about the standard form and how we're going to turn it into a standard form. So for decimals, instead of just adding zeros, the 3 means we're going to move the decimal point. So just like you remember when we multiplied the 3 times 10 times 10 times 10, we got 3,000. So when you multiply a number by 10, it's going to get bigger. So when we want our decimal to get bigger, we know we are going to move that decimal point to the right. So if we have the number 2 and 7 tenths and we want to move that decimal point to the right, we want to move it three times. One, two, three times. So we're going to say one, two, three times. And for every one of those swoops, I need to add a zero. So let's take a look at what our number became. I had a two, seven. Now I've got two zeros after it. So my number, if I multiply two and seven tenths times 10 times 10 times 10, I get 2,700. Let's make sure we understand that by breaking it down a little bit farther. If I say 2 and 7 tenths times 10, you know that to make it 10 times bigger, we're going to get 27. Because 10 times bigger than 2 and 7 tenths is 27. Now, if we multiply it by 10 again, we're going to get 270. Because you know 27 times 10 is 270. And then times 10 again is going to get us 2,700. That's how our decimals work when we multiply it by powers of 10. Let's go ahead and dive into the next one. For this next one, it gave us the expanded form. So we have to find the scientific notation and the standard form. I think it might be a little bit easier to find the scientific notation first. So let's try that. First things first, I'm going to go ahead and just move over my three tenths because that three tenths is going to stay exactly the same. So I'm just going to get it moved on over here. Three tenths stays the same. And I know I'm going to have to multiply it by 10. It's up to us to decide what that exponent is going to be. So let's count our tens. We've got one, two, three, four. Four tens. I know I need to multiply this three tenths times 10 four times. So my exponent is going to be four. So we would read this as 3 tenths times 10 to the fourth power or 3 tenths times 10 to the power of 4. That's why we call it the powers of 10 because we say the power of 4 and it's on a 10. We got this. So we know how to turn it into scientific notation. Now let's focus on turning it into expanded form. So I'm going to go ahead and break it down just like we did last time. We've got 3 tenths. If I multiply that times 10, I know my answer is going to be 3 because that 3 tenths, one times bigger than that is 3, times 10 again is going to be 30, times 10 again is going to be 300. Let's count those tens. I needed 4. I've got 1, 2, 
3. So we need to multiply it by 10 one more time. Times 10 again, is that going to equal 3,000? So there's our answer for that one. Let's do it in the other way as well. So we've also got our 3 tenths. I'm getting a little messy, but I'm trying to show you multiple ways. Because remember, not everybody does things exactly the same way. So we've got our 3 tenths, and I see that with my exponent, I want to move this decimal four times. And I have to think in my head, am I going to move it to the right or to the left? I know if I'm multiplying by 10, I'm going to be getting bigger. This is really important because later in the week, we're going to be dividing by 10. So when I'm multiplying by 10, I want to get bigger. So I'm going to move it to the right four times. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. Now my decimal is there. Not sure why it has little wings, but it is right here. So let's go ahead and write that out. We've got our 3 with 1, 2, 3 zeros. 1, 2, 3 zeros. There we go. And I have a decimal point at the end. Remember, you can have a decimal point at the end of a number because 3,000 decimal point is the same as 3,000. So we have 3,000 equals 3 tenths to the power of 4. 3 tenths times 10 to the fourth power. All right, let's move it down. For this one, we've got our standard notation of 1,800. Wow, we have to turn this into scientific notation and expanded form. I think it's going to be easiest to go from standard form to scientific notation first and then maybe to expanded. But it'll be up to you. Let's try it this way first. I know that if I have a number, any whole number, if there's no decimal in it, I can add a decimal to the end. Remember, I can do this because I know that 1,800 is the same as 1,800 and zero tenths. So we can always add a decimal to the end of a number. So now I want to figure out how many times I need to swoop that decimal until it gets in between the 1 and the 8. So let's go ahead and try. I've got 1 swoop, 2 swoop, 3 swoop, and it's going to be in between the 1 and the 8. So you saw I had 3 swoops there until I got it where I wanted it to go. So when I'm writing, I'm going to write 1 and 8 tenths times 10 to the third power. Because I swooped that decimal three times to get it where I wanted it to go. Now, if we weren't working on decimals, I could have said 18 times 10 to the second power. That would have worked as well. Let's take a look at that. I could have swooped this decimal one, two times, and the decimal would be behind the 18. But remember, we are looking to work on our uh, decimals. So I want to go ahead and swoop it that third time and have 1 and 8 tenths times 10 to the third power. Let's go ahead and look at that expanded form. I'm going to keep my 1.8. It comes on over. And I know 10 to the third power means there's going to be three tens in my expanded form. So let's go ahead and look at that. 1.8 times 10 times 10 times 10. So 1.8 times 10 to the third power would be 1 times 1.8 times 10 times 10 times 10. Now... Since I'm new at this, I want to go ahead and double check myself, really triple check myself to make sure that this equals that. So let's double check. If I say 1 and 8 tenths times 10, I know I'm going to have 18. If I multiply that by 10 again, I know I'm going to have 180. And I multiply that times 10 again, I'm going to have 1,800. There we go. I also want to prove it one more way just in case. I kind of want to prove it this way. Oh, that second arrow doesn't need to be there. If I have 1 and 8 tenths and I move that decimal three times to the right, because remember, if our um, exponent is 3, we're moving that decimal three times to the right. So we're going to say 1, 2, 3. Let's double check and make sure we have the same answer. Two zeros there. That equals 1,800 or 1,800. Beautiful. Sometimes it's super important to triple check yourself, even if it gets a little messy on your paper. Let's go ahead and dive into these next two problems. All right. Oh, goodness. My screen is freezing. That's not ideal. Let's talk about this. 67 hundredths times 10 to the second power. Oh, it moved again. Uh, 67 hundredths times 10 to the second power. For this one, 
I want you to go ahead and think what the expanded form would be for this problem. Think about what the expanded form for 67 hundredths to the second power would be. Go ahead and write it in your box. For this one, you should have written 67 hundredths times 10 times 10. Because to the second power means there are two tens that we should multiply the 67 hundredths by. Looks good, looks good. Go ahead and try to convert this to standard form and see what you get. For the standard form of this one, there's so many ways you could do it, but we're going to do it both ways because I don't know how your brain works. So for this one, I'm going to say 67 hundredths times 10 is going to equal 6 and 7 tenths because I know that 10 times bigger than 6 tenths is 6. So 6 and 7 tenths times 10 again is going to get me 670. So I think my answer is going to be 670, but let's check it the other way as well. If I've got 6, 0, and 67 hundredths, and I want to swoop that decimal two times, we're going to say one swoop, two swoop. Wow, those answers are different. Let's see if we can figure out where I went wrong. Oh, I bet you already saw it. I totally made a mistake. We all make mistakes. Come back down here to where I multiplied before. As you can see, I said 67 hundredths times 10 equals 6.7, which makes sense because 6 tenths times 10 would be 6 ones, which makes sense. But then I said 6 and 7 tenths times 10 equals 670. And no, it does not. 6, tenths, 6 and 7 tenths times 10 would equal 67. Let's take a look at that. If I've got 6 and 7 tenths times 10, I've got 7 times 1 is 7, 7 times 6, or 1 times 6 is 6. If I multiply, add that up, and then swoop my decimal, swoop out 1, drop it down, swoop it in 1, my answer would be 67. Wow. Sometimes we make mistakes. It's part of life. As you can see, that is why I wanted to write it again and check it again. Because with the second time when I checked it, when I was swooping my decimal, I didn't make that same mistake. So it all depends on how your brain works. Let's go ahead and try the last one. For this last one, it looks quite large. We've got 9 and 12 hundredths times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Go ahead and turn that into, let's do scientific notation first. And I know you probably can't write exponents. Um, on your Nearpod. So what I want you to do instead of trying to write the exponent is just say to the power of blank. So you're going to say something times something to the power of something. Go ahead and try it out. All right, for this one, you should have brought over your 9 and 12 hundredths. And you should have said times 10 because that's what they all look like. But now we have to decide what that exponent or what that power of 10 is going to be. Let's count our tens. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, five tenths. So I know if I'm multiplying that nine and twelve hundredths times five tenths, then my exponent is going to be five. So you should have gotten nine and twelve hundredths times ten to the power of five. Looking good, looking good. Let's go ahead and jump over and write it in standard form. Let's go ahead and write this in standard form. Try it out. All right, you know, I'm going to solve it several different ways because I messed up the last time. I am going to go ahead and erase our answer here so that it doesn't get in my way. So let's go ahead and do it the multiplication way first, and I'll try to be a little bit more careful. I know that 9 and 12 hundredths times 10 is 91 and 2 tenths because that 1 is in the tenths place. And if I wanted to be 10 times bigger, it would be in the ones place, so 91 and 2 tenths times 10 equals 912 times 10 equals 9,120. How many tens do we have? One, two, three. Wow, I need two more. Okay, times 10 equals 91,200 times 10 equals 912,000. So my answer this way is 912,000. Let's check it the other way to see if I got it correct. 
We've got nine and 12 hundredths, and we want to swoop that decimal five times. All right, let's start. One swoop, two swoop, three swoop, four swoop, five swoop. We swooped our decimal five times. Let's add in our zeros. One, two, three. And as you can see, I have 912,000 for this answer as well. So I hope you got 912,000. It's always great to double check your work. And again, if you do not understand how you got the answer wrong, please raise your hand so I can help you.